This week on Canada in the Rough, we're hunting the Yukon. Dawson City, Yukon is the starting point for this week's adventure. Paul Beasley is headed there with high hopes of harvesting a once-in-a-lifetime caribou and moose with Tombstone Outfitters. This beautiful part of Canada is known worldwide for its breathtaking vistas and mountain ranges, but the Yukon's class of animals is simply legendary. Throughout Paul's 12-day hunt on horseback, he ventures deep into the picturesque mountain ranges and encounters not only massive moose, huge caribou and impressive grizzly bears, but he learns firsthand how exciting and addictive hunting the Yukon can be. Stay tuned for Yukon Moose Mania this week on Canada in the Rough. Ah, that'll do. Well, it feels good to be here in the Yukon. This has been a dream of mine since I was a little boy to come up here and hunt these majestic moose, and I cannot wait. We just arrived in Dawson City this morning, and uh, when we arrived, we went to the shop and saw some of the moose and the caribou from this week's hunters. Absolutely spectacular. And this moose is jaw-dropping, really. I've been a moose hunter all my life, shot lots of them. I've never seen anything like this before. It is, it is just truly something to behold. So they're here. Big animals roam these mountains and we know they're here. We're here at base camp. I just shot my rifle. My rifle was sighted in for an inch and a quarter high at 100 yards. So you can see I'm a little off on the left, but I think that's just me. I'm not shooting off of my lead sled like normal. So we're all good for the morning. We're gonna get settled into base camp tonight and uh, come tomorrow morning, we're gonna be out in these mountains looking for some majestic moose and mountain caribou. I cannot wait. Well, Bert, this is the most beautiful weather I think we could ask for out here this time of year, is it not? It is, yes, perfect. It's nice and cool and crisp this morning, yep, and uh, great for moose hunting. Well, when you say cool, like I would have said more cold. <laughs> I guess you've been out here since July or August, so That's this right. is probably just still cool to you. You yep. know what's yet to come, but it was cold this morning. Min minus 10 probably? Yeah, it was about minus 12, yeah. Minus 12? Yeah. 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 Was, so, yeah. which has got to be all the makings of what we need. It's late perfect. September, perfect. we've got cold weather, we've got a bit of snow in the mountains. Yep. What else could you ask for? Yeah, perfect, yeah. We're going to go up the North Klondike and doing some riding and glassing and doing some calling and perfect day for hunting moose. Excellent. Well, I'm excited to be doing this with you. Excited yep. that we got Jenny along for the ride as well. Nice that the two of you can be out here enjoying these hunts together. And uh, so you ready? You betcha. Let's, Let's go. Let's get hunting. When venturing out into the backcountry, it's important to be prepared. Knowledgeable guides and sure-footed horses are a must, as well as dried food packages and compact cooking equipment. But some of the most important gear that could save your life is some type of satellite phone and solar panels for charging. All adventures into the mountains, even day trips, can turn deadly in a split second. And being equipped with the proper safety gear can be the difference of you coming home or not. I got a moose here, I got two moose. Looks like cows, I don't think I'm seeing. Wait, there's another one coming in. There's a bull there too. He's down, he's about 200 yards below them. Oh, from this distance, it's so hard to judge, but he definitely warrants another look. Bert's just over the hill here, he's glassing this other, this valley below me. I'm gonna go let him know what I see, and we need to make a stock. We got about five hours of daylight left, so we got lots of time, but that's a heck of a ways to go, so 
We're gonna have to make hay. find bigger ones. There's a lot of bigger ones out here. I think so. Yeah. He's just not there. Yeah. Well, we just put three hours into that stock, got within shooting range, and he just wasn't quite what we're looking for. It's a beautiful bull. Don't get me wrong. Absolutely gorgeous bull. But there's a lot bigger out here in the Yukon. But that's pretty exciting for day one. Yeah. <laughs> coming down the horse trail right where we walked. Oh yeah. Check oh. that out. Oh, he's gonna go down across the river. Yeah, the down he goes. Wow, what a sight. He's definitely a boar, I can tell. It looks like a pretty good sized bear, does it not? Yep. Look at him, wide open. How far do you think that is? Well, let me, let me range him here. 144. That's it, eh? Yep. Oh, man. What a shame we don't have a bear tag. Is he a near tag? Yeah, he does in his left ear. Isn't that something? Just a little, little yellow one. There he goes. What a cool experience. Yeah, there he goes. Oh. day coming in on this spot. It's one o'clock in the afternoon. We just finally sat down to get some food, some water. We've been horsebacking in those, all up this river valley. We get to this high vantage point and we look out and Bird says, you're not gonna believe it. We look up on the top of this knoll and there's just a herd of caribou, just a gigantic herd. There's so many bulls in there, it's hard to believe. There's at least a dozen bulls, I think. As we're looking at those, he then says, oh look, down below, there's a cow moose. There's been a little bulls walked up since, so we've got bulls, cows, caribou, moose. It's, it's hard to know what to do and what to look at. But uh, one way or another, we're gonna start making our way in there. We look behind us and we've got a bit of a storm coming in, so um, it may make for a little bit of a, uh, a rush to try to get there before the blizzard comes, but we haven't seen a shooter moose in there, so we may just go after the caribou first unless we get closer and, and, uh, and a big bull appears. So one way or another, it's pretty exciting. Hey, 
Big ball, look. Big ball. What? Right here. Earth? Where is he? Where is he? Oh my gosh, look at that. Right here. Look at that. Stone Mountain Range, I tell ya. We are on our way to move in on the caribou that we can see at the top of this peak. And this bull, which I don't know if he's the one that we saw, as we're coming in closer, we can see a bull with some cows over here. Turned out there was a big bull over there. But still, I'm not sure if that's exactly him or not, because he came from this bottom. The sucker works in. He just hears all of our noise, starts to come closer to see what it is. We start calling. As you can see, he comes in on a rope. Absolutely exhilarating. We had that bullet. 28, 30 yards or maybe, maybe 20 yards. I don't know what it was. A giant Yukon bull. <laughs> Bert, that was absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. Still right there. He's still there. He's still right he doesn't there. want to leave his cows. Yep. He sees these great big horses and thinks they're, they're cow moose. Unbelievable. I tell you what, my finger was so itchy right there. I know. Yeah. But we came to the Tudor Stone Mountain Range for a reason, and uh, we're after those. those <laughs> there's the caribou up on the, the top. hill right there. Yeah, you, you can probably see those right at the very top of that uh, that snowy peak. Let's go get those caribou. Okay. <laughs> As Paul and the group moved up the mountain, the wind started to change and blow at their backs. But being this far into the stock, they decided to press on in hopes the caribou would not bust. That's One, way two, more than 50. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Like that's incredible. There's about 70 of them there. At least, like the hillside is just covered. Yeah, look at them all. Think about it. This this is the whole herd off this whole mountain range, probably. Like, this is gonna have all the bulls from all over the I've place. I've never seen or heard that big of mountain caribou in my life. We would have had the most unbelievable sight if that wind hadn't screwed us. Oh man. <sighs> that is heartbreaking. There's some huge bulls in there. I can't believe there's stamina. Like they're miles from where we just left them. Well, that's gonna end our day. I mean, but we got a long walk out of here, eh? Yeah, it's we gonna do, be yeah. dark by the time we get out of here. 
Oh my gosh, Bert. It's heart wrenching. You know, as I've had a few hours riding this horse back in off, uh, off the mountain tonight, my mind has just been going crazy. It's been playing lots of tricks on me. It's funny how your mind can do that. When you, when you make a decision to pass an animal, there's always these thoughts of, did I make the right choice? And uh, as you saw, I was faced with a dilemma of, I had this moose right in my lap, or I had these caribou up on the hill. The moose was an absolutely gorgeous animal. He wasn't that once in a lifetime moose that I wanted to come to the Yukon for, but he was a stunning, beautiful beast. I went after the caribou because I felt like I didn't know if I'd get another chance at, at a big herd of caribou like that again. I'm now, I'm now I'm left with the dilemma of, I'm not sure if I made the right decision. I've, I've literally spent three hours riding this horse back feeling like I made a mistake and uh, there's no worse feeling. But every time you pass an animal, you, 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 you're faced with that, uh, with that experience and that, uh, those potential thoughts. I'm just, now I'm really starting to feel like uh, it might've been a mistake, but nothing I can do now. Well, we have just spotted a nice big bull moose. We, uh, we've been riding since first thing this morning. This was our first real stop of the day. It's almost lunchtime and uh, we were just pulling out our sandwiches. We thought, let's give it a few calls. Sure enough, after the first round of calls, up stands this great big bull on a knob just on the far side of this valley. He's just bedded back, back down again. So a couple of the cows are still up and moving around, but I think he's gonna be down for another few hours. So we got probably a, a good two to three hours before we can get on him, but, uh, but it's time. Once again, another amazing encounter. Absolutely amazing. I just love the amount of encounters we have when we come to the Yukon.
Bert, that looks like a good pull. Let's get a closer look. Oh, yeah, he's not a shooter, though, eh? No, he's not quite, not quite big enough. No, just not a mature bull for these parts. No, still a cool encounter. Yeah, cool encounter. We've just been riding in this valley here, and we just spotted a bull um, out through the spruce. All we could see were the tops of his palms. He looks pretty good, so we're gonna try to get a better look. Yeah, let's, let's go down this trail quietly and do a little bit of calling. Okay, I'll follow you. Okay, I'm just gonna move around this corner. Okay, here we go. Okay. What about Ray Beckerman? When does this ever happen that you have two giant bulls in front of you and you can't take a shot at either one? We're just gonna have to be calm, let it play out. We're gonna, they're gonna move one way or the other and we'll have to reset up on them probably once that happens.
He's moving to the left now. I think we need to move. I gotta get a better angle on him. Oh my goodness, I can't believe that finally happened. Three hours we've been after these bulls in this moose. We didn't even realize there was cows here at first, and it turns out there was a, a ton of them. Every time we tried to move on this bull to try to get an angle on him, get you know me in position where the camera could see him at the same time, we'd realize there's another cow looking at us. And then this young bull here that beds on us, unbelievable. It just, and it all happened so fast at the end. By the time he finally got into a spot where the camera and I could both see him at the same time, it was such a small little window, but after three hours and numb legs and we're freezing cold, like my hands are numb, we just, we ha I had to do it. So I absolutely hammered him. He's down right there. I gotta go find Bert and see what he's doing. Oh, I hear he comes now. No, it's Moose, Moose, cow a cow. Okay, right, now I'm all bear, bear, bear. bear chase a cow and a calf moose like 20 yards from us I don't know what that is Bert you okay yeah did you see that bear yeah did he come by you too yeah the bear just come by yeah he's chasing that chasing those two moose I'm talking like that trail right right yeah. there 20 yards wow that was freaky I tell you <gasps> I can't believe that did you get that on footage? Well, I don't know. I mean, honestly, it happened so fast. I, I just tell my kid, we got moose coming. I thought it was you. And I hear these hooves running. And I'm thinking, what are you doing? And I turn to realize it's it's cow and calf moose. Absolutely crazy. Unbelievable. Ah. Well, Bert, we have a bull down. <laughs> you probably thought it was never going to happen, did you? Could you see much oh, yeah. of that? Like, I know you weren't that far behind me, but these trees are so thick. Yeah, yeah. Unbelievable. Well, let's go have a look at him. I, right. I want to put my hands on this big boy. Goodness, Bert, I can't believe the size of these things. <laughs> wow. Absolutely unreal. When we were flying into the airport, we get into uh, Dawson, and I remember seeing a sign that said, uh, Yukon larger than life. That's right. That's like their tagline, right? Yeah, that's their tagline. Well, yeah. now I see what they're talking about because yeah. these animals are truly larger than life. Yes. When you, it, until you get up close to these things and you see, it, it, is, it is hard to believe. Yeah, they are monsters. Yeah, they're huge animals. Think yeah. of the meals we'll get off of this animal. Oh, there's a lot of meat there. <laughs> a lot of meat. Wow, well, what an adventure we've had. This week has been truly, truly incredible. It's been yep. encounter after encounter, hasn't it's it? It's been really exciting, yeah, all kinds of adventure, yeah. We've got a lot of work ahead of us, though. Yeah, we do, yeah. A lot, of work. a lot of work, so yeah. let's get the knives out and, uh, and get started before we lose light. All right. Well, that about does it. You know, we've had to bring four horses back in here to pack out all this meat, and uh, it, it is quite a chore, but what an experience it has been, and so rewarding. We've had so many different encounters, so many different experiences, and it has just been a true joy. Just simply riding horses through these mountains is, is something everyone should experience. Most people, though, will only experience it in postcards or watching commercials. But you know what, folks? You've got to get out here and, and experience it for yourself. Like I said, you don't have to be coming out here for the meat or the hunt. You can come out here just to simply enjoy nature, take photographs, whether it's hiking on horseback or whatever the case might be, you've got to do it. If you ever have the chance to come out here and experience the Yukon or a hunt with Tombstone Outfitters, you've got to try it. I'm your host, Paul Beasley from Canada in the Rock. Remember, enjoy the greatness of Canada and be proud of your hunting heritage.
Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to our page and follow us on Facebook and Instagram.